Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Laws of Physical Health hosted by Dr. David Lipman, a chiropractor, an amazing chiropractor, and a member of our Laws of Life networking group. How are you, Dr. Lipman? Outstanding once again. Good morning. Thanks again for having me here, Blanca. How are you doing today? I am fired up. I want to hear what your laws of physical health are going to be today. You are such an amazing teacher. Well, thank you. Um, I'm fortunate that I've been able to have learned things myself along the way that have helped me. And now I'm in a position to be able to help many people. I'm, again, doing this to see if I can reach out to even more people that might never come into this office and be able to give them the kind of education and content that can be helpful to them on their end. So just to recap from last week when we really just did an intro into what the show will be about, um, I had let out my first law of physical health, and that is where you're feeling pain is not where it's coming from, it's where it's ending up. Now, today's law that we're gonna start out with is that the body functions together and it dysfunctions together. So again, that kind of builds on that first law that pain being felt is happening from a mechanical cause elsewhere in the body because the body functions together and dysfunctions together. So I'm going to try to hope to build an educational process through all this so each one of you out there can understand better about your body and better be able to maintain and manage things when things might go wrong and you have pain. So today we're gonna to start the first segment which is the most common pain that comes into my office for the last 35 years, and that's low back pain. And what I'd like to do is to give you a good foundational understanding of really what's going on when you feel pain in the lower back or the pelvis or the hip. So I'm gonna give you, and I'll try not to be you know, too sciencey, but give you something that you could really understand. So I'm gonna use some visuals in that process to illustrate these things. So one of the things I wanted to first introduce you to is a concept in the body that's called reciprocal inhibition. Now, what that fancy word sounds like or means is that when we have two muscles that are moving the same joint, like the biceps flexing the elbow joint and the triceps extending the elbow joint, reciprocal inhibition allows the opposing muscle to be able to contract by relaxing the one on the opposite side, because otherwise they'll be fighting to do the same thing, one this way and one that way. But reciprocal inhibition lets me contract my bicep and relaxes my tricep in the meantime and vice versa. So why I bring this up is because there are certain mechanisms in the body that help the body to function mechanically properly in terms of weight motion. Now in the lower back, we have a mechanism that involves a connection between the lumbar spine or the lower back, the pelvis where the sacrum and the pelvis um, bones come together and the hip too. So Blanca, if you can just pull up that graphic on the psoas muscle, the hip flexors, I wanna show people exactly how this comes together. So as you can see on that psoas muscle on both sides of the spine, there's actually an origination of that muscle right along the front of that lumbar spine. So that muscle attaches actually to the spine or your back from the front. So again, most of the time you're feeling pain in the back, but these muscles are very powerful muscles that are actually attaching from the spine. They run through the pelvis without attachment, and then they end up attaching down to the um, hip joint uh, or the thigh. And so their function is to hip flex or bring the thigh towards the lumbar spine. So hip flexion being like this is how that hip is being moved in the front plane or flexion. Now the gluteus maximus is the major hip extender or bringing that leg backwards. So when you bring your leg this way, that's hip extension and that's the gluteus maximus, which of course is in the back. Now the hamstrings are actually a secondary hip extender and they help the gluteus maximus, but not a primary. So what happens, especially with people that end up sitting for long periods of time. You know, in this modern world, so many people are at their computer sitting or driving. When you sit, those hip flexors tend to shorten and they get tight. And because of that tension, there's a mechanism through reciprocal inhibition that actually starts to cancel out the effective extension by the glutes. So now what happens is the hamstrings are trying to do hip extension where they're only a secondary helper. 
And that's when you start to get really tight hamstrings. So people that suffer from tight hamstrings, they think it's just because you have tight hamstrings, but really it's because the hamstrings are trying to do what the glute should be doing, but it's being canceled out through reciprocal inhibition because the hip flexors in front are so tight from long periods of sitting and shortening. That's why a lot of people, when you first get up from sitting a long period of time, you try to stand up and it's difficult because those muscles are shortened and tightened and they have to elongate in order to be able to do that. Now, there's some simple ways to reset that proper mechanism. And I'd like to show that to you now. So if you can bring that second set of stills up. Sure. I'm going to put them through um, a series of stretches. So if you could just bring that still one more time. Stretch those hip flexors and be able to get those to relax. And then the next part of the process is to get the glutes to start firing again. So we're going to go through these with a video so you can actually see some of the nuances of the stretch that I like to bring up. So if you could bring up that third video where we're seeing the stretch routine, I'd like to comment on that. Maybe we can kind of run it through twice. Sure. Can you, um, can you see it? Um, not yet. Mm -hmm. Now it can, looks like it's coming up. Oh, let's see oh, you. So anyway, until it comes on, what we're trying to do here is reset that mechanism so the body is going to be using its proper elements for both weight bearing and motion. So we're, we're basically taking the way the body compensates or dysfunctions together and turning it around so it will function back together again. So having those stretch exercises done, um, starting with something that we call the runner's lunge, there's a yoga pose that's similar that's called the lizard for those of you that do yoga. And then the pigeon stretch, which is certainly a known yoga pose, again, to help stretch some of the deeper pelvic muscles as well as the gluteal muscles. So if we can have that shown, I'd like to just comment on some of the you know, nuances of, of what I want to have somebody focus on when they're doing those stretches and understanding how it works and why it works. So you'll be better equipped to be able to help unwind all that tension that's causing that low back pain. Absolutely. Can you bring up that um, video of the stretch routine? Yes. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. I've got it by George. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Yes, of course. So let's see if we get that playing. All right, so I don't see it coming up yet. Um, so what, it, it keeps pulling the other video. Um, what I'll do is I'll post it in a live feed. Okay. Keep going. Yeah, so again, not only for the low back pain, but some of the other conditions that are so common, I'm going to be trying to give you these insights of things that you can do for homework, which is what I give all my patients to do, that will reinforce bringing back the proper foundation of mobility, stability, and function throughout the body. Again, it's not just about the low back. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. Everything affects everything. Everything connects. So again, like I had said, the law of physical health last week was where you're feeling pain's not where it's coming from, it's where it's ending up. And again, today it's about the body functions together and dysfunctions together. So here's that runner's lunge that we have coming up. If you can just pull that back up. So let's start that from the beginning if you're able to. And I just wanna make certain comments on certain things to focus on. Um, if we can just restart that. Because the, um, the, the program of the routine should start, yeah, if you can just get to the beginning. It looks like you're doing that. Yeah, almost, almost. Drag it, drag it. 
There you go. Okay, so the runner's lunge, you start from a high plank as if you were going to do a push-up. Then you bring one foot right outside the hand that's on the same side. And once you get into that position, you're going to rotate towards the ceiling. So you'll further that stretch. You're going to follow that with the pigeon stretch where you bring your leg underneath you and you try to drink, bring everything down flush to the floor. So you're getting a really good stretch throughout the hip flexors and the glutes with that. And I have my patients go back and forth between the runner's lunge and pigeon stretch three times and then get on their back and do the hip bridges because now you want to specifically focus on engaging those glutes. So we're going to fire those glutes by focusing on pushing from the heels and using that gluteal squeeze to bring that pelvis up and also engage the lower back muscles too. So again, the process involves stretching the hip flexors and those tense muscles that are around the hips, getting them to loosen up, and then be able to get those glutes to start firing properly again. Because again, when that tension is up front, they are not firing properly to support the hip joint, the pelvic joint, and the lower back. And those muscles in the front, when they're tight, they're compressing everything from the front, which again, you feel on the back, but it's as if those springs that run this way are just too tight in the front and you know, causing all that compression. So we're now getting that mechanism to reset itself where those muscles will become elongated again. And they're long, they're like 10 or 12 inches. And so they're very powerful too. So when they are tight, they are putting a significant amount of pressure on that low back. So if you, on a regular basis, start to go with that runner's lunge and pigeon stretch again, three times back and forth, and then follow it up with the glute bridge, you will help the body to reset that proper mechanism of mobility, stability, and function back there. Now, in some cases, when people are really wound up tight, there are things that I've developed too that might be of more assistance because sometimes it takes more than just stretching to be able to really get in there. And I have some products that I have found on the market that are really good to help self-release those. And in our next installment next week, I'm going to bring those in and show you those things. And then also some exercises on top of that foundational stuff to help augment and improve that functionality so you'll be more resilient to the daily wear and tear of your life that's causing that pain. Blanca? Wow, that is so powerful. You've taught us so many laws of physical health today. It is, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's amazing what you have taught us. Uh, what, what's your number one takeaway? Um, the number one takeaway I say is that every day our lives physically are putting wear and tear on us, whatever it is, whatever our tasks are. You know, I'm, I'm on my feet all day as an example, but I'm bending over and picking people up and doing all kinds of things. So my exercise routine, my maintenance routine to counteract or countermeasure all that has to prepare my body to maintain the mobility and stability of function for my daily routine. So people, again, that are sitting, sitting or even have tasks that are maybe one-sided creating that imbalance, their exercise homework each day has to have a countermeasure to unwind that dysfunction that can ensue when those things build up over time. So in my mind, it's a small price to pay to, you know, get into that routine each day to just help maintain that pain-free and functional lifestyle because nobody's happy when they're in pain and a lot of people are very debilitated, but very unnecessarily because each one of us are responsible for this body that we walk around in. And if we can identify the things that can help us each day to live pain-free and functionally, I think that's the goal and that's the greatest reward. I mean, I drag myself out of bed at four in the morning to get to the gym at five. And I do drag myself out of bed, but I've never left a workout saying, God, I should have stayed home sleeping. That is so true. And the laws that you're teaching us are really motivating everyone to realize how important it is to have a doctor like you in their life to help reset the body because you're going to have a better workout after you see you, right, too? Absolutely. If you're moving better and functioning better, everything's better, including exercise. And just to bring it up, many people ask me after a treatment, you know, should I, should I hold off from exercise or should I do it? And I say, absolutely, because... Now that we've unwound things and getting things moving again, we want your body and your brain to get control of those ranges of motion that you might not have been working in. So you do want to start using it and take that body out for a spin, so to speak, you know, with its new level of mobility, stability, and function. That is 
incredible. And just to remind everyone, you can contact Dr. Lippman at the number on the screen, 561-674-1217. You can also take a picture of the QR code on the background above, and you can get all his links there. His office is incredibly hospitable and welcoming. Every time I go into the office, I'm greeted with smiles. That That's, that's I think, one of the biggest things that sets you apart is that you make everybody feel really welcome in your office. Well, I, I feel grateful to, to have the ability to serve people that come in here. So it's it's not like working. It just feels like, you know, this is what I'm, my purpose is. And it's and it's great because I've learned some insights through much of my own injuries that I've learned how to maintain and you know manage those things that I've had, you know, thousands of people that I've been able to bring that to over the years. And, you know, I, I, I hope that I can continue to do that for time to come. And if this becomes a good medium to do that, then I'll be thrilled. Ah. Uh. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to have you as one of the hosts in the Laws of Life webcast network. I can't wait to learn our laws of physical health next week. Join us every Thursday at 11 o'clock with Dr. David Lippman. And think of him for all of your chiropractic needs and physical health needs. Thanks, Dr. Lippman. Thank you, Blanca. You guys, all be well. Have a blessed day. You too.